So when we look at the um, light reaction of photosynthesis, what we see here is we have the thylakoid, and so I'm just changing the color here. So the thylakoid is where the light reaction occurs. So I'm zooming in so we can see the process a little bit easier. Now in the thylakoid is where we have the light reaction take place. And so the light reaction is going to rely on an electron transport chain, similar to like we saw in the mitochondria. So the light is going to hit these little purple proteins. These are actually called photosystems. So between these two photosystems is our electron transport chain. So here we have um, another protein, which is actually ATP synthase. So the basics of the light reaction is that water is going to come into the plant because plants need water for photosynthesis. And what's going to happen, we're going to split the water. The electrons will enter into the electron transport chain where they will have a final electron acceptor called NADP+. NADP+, will accept the electrons becoming reduced so it also picks up a hydrogen. And then the hydrogen ions, oh, the oxygen leaves, that's a waste product for the plant. Eventually over time, hydrogen ions will build up inside of that thylakoid and they'll flow through ATP synthase, making ATP. And this is called photophosphorylation. Now, the Calvin cycle happens in the stroma, or outside of the thylakoid, but still in the chloroplast. The Calvin cycle is the part that's going to require carbon dioxide, and this is what we're going to build. So in the Calvin cycle, NADPH is going to be invested as well as ATP in a series of endergonic reactions. We're going to invest those to build, so it's an anabolic pathway, we're going to build glucose, or G3P. Technically, two G3Ps makes one glucose. So let's go ahead and look inside the thylakoid at that electron transport chain a little bit more. So here you have um, the electron transport chain, and as we saw water comes in, uh, water is going to be split into its hydrogens, electrons, and oxygen. Now why water is split will be on a later slide. So here these electrons travel through the electron transport chain, and as they go through the electron transport chain, they pump hydrogens into that thylakoid space. This is where we build up that proton gradient. And now as those hydrogen ions flow through ATP synthase, it makes ATP. This is a type of phosphorylation. And as we'll see later, it's called photophosphorylation. So now if I look um, at like a textbook picture of the thylakoid, um, we can see here, this area is that photosystem, that purple protein we saw where the light hits. Here we have light hitting. So we have photosystem 2 and photosystem 1. And what will happen, this is where we split our water. So in this, this is the, the electron transport chain is located in the thylakoid membrane. So electrons will travel down the electron transport chain, pumping hydrogen ions in to that thylakoid space. When the electrons make it to the end, the final electron acceptor is NADPH. Um, we'll have chemiosmosis happen. The hydrogen ions will flow through ATP synthase, making ATP, um, where the ATP and the NADPH will then be used in the Calvin cycle. Okay, so we're gonna talk about light for just a minute. So there are different wavelengths of light um, and plants are going to use these different wavelengths differently. Um, so when we talk about like why plants are green, for example, plants have a pigment called chlorophyll, and chlorophyll absorbs all colors of light except for green. And you can see in this picture, when we look at a plant, plant appears green because the green light is not absorbed by chlorophyll. So chlorophyll absorbs red light, orange light, blue light, purple light, etc., but not green kind of yellow, um, but green light is bouncing off of that plant into your eye and the leaf appears green. So when we look at like an apple for example, apple's red pigments are going to absorb all colors of light except for uh, colors in the red spectrum. If you look at like something that's black, black absorbs all colors of light. So it's kind of like the absent of light bouncing off. 
Now when we look here, there's another picture to see how like um, with the red, red pigment um, does not absorb red light, so it bounces back and you see red. Same thing with green and blue. Now to get combinations of colors, like purple for example, we know that purple is a com, but when you color when you're a kid, you mix red and blue crayons to get purple. Same thing, you'll have both of those wavelengths of light bounding into your eye. So that, uh, like a grape appears purple. So when we look at um, plants, our food and stuff, is full of different kinds of pigments, not just chlorophyll. Uh, purple pigments, we'll talk about more in class. So when we, okay, sorry. When we look at um, these pigments, now chlorophyll is the main pigment in plants, and there's chlorophyll A and there's chlorophyll B. These chlorophyll molecules are located within the photosystems. You can see them here. There's also um, accessory pigments that help chlorophyll, and that's what's located here on the sides. But chlorophyll are our main pigments in plants. So, when the light hits the photosystems, what's going to happen is the electrons are going to get excited and they're going to travel through the electron transport chain. So let me do this again for us. So the light is going to hit the photosystem and the electrons located within chlorophyll are going to get so excited they're going to shoot up to the primary electron acceptor, travel down the electron transport chain. Um, and then as they travel down, hydrogen ions are pumped into this thylakoid space inside of the thylakoid. Over here on this side, this photosystem one, when light hits, the, the electrons get excited and shoot up, and then NADPH will be formed. When the electrons travel down, they replace the electrons in chlorophyll B. So let's watch that again. The light hits. You have the electrons shoot up. As the electrons travel down the electron transport chain, it pumps hydrogen ions into the thylakoid space. Now if we focus on photosystem one for a second, the light has the electrons shoot up from that chlorophyll. Well, that chlorophyll just lost electrons, so those ones are replaced from these ones coming down the electron transport chain. The final electron acceptor over here is going to be um, NADPH. Okay, now at this first photosystem, photosystem two, uh, to replace the electrons that were just lost or lost from chlorophyll, we're gonna take our water and we're gonna split it. We split water into the protons, electrons, and oxygen. And here's where electrons are gonna now replace the ones that were just lost from chlorophyll. When we split water, splitting water is called photolysis. Photo with light and lysis is to split. When we split water to replace the electrons, it's called photolysis. Now, let's go ahead and look in a photosystem in more detail. So as the light comes into the photosystem, it kind of gets passed around from pigment to pigment, where the final like um, light acceptor, I guess, is um, chlorophyll A in photosystem two. So chlorophyll A, it's kind of, I think about it like a team of volleyball players passing the ball around and the last person to spike the ball over the net would be like chlorophyll A. So when the energy comes in and is funneled, think about a funnel even, to chlorophyll A, that's where the electrons get so excited, oh, they break off. And they actually leave chlorophyll A and this is where they'll then enter in to the electron transport chain. Now in the middle of chlorophyll is magnesium. Magnesium is technically the area of chlorophyll that is donating those two electrons. So two electrons come off and they come from magnesium from the middle of chlorophyll A. Uh, here's another picture to kind of just help show how the light is passed around to the um, chlorophyll A molecule. I'm sorry, this would be chlorophyll A. And then it leaves chlorophyll and enters up into the electron transport chain. You can think about it as getting passed around to the reaction center or like a funnel. I like to also point out how the um, different pigments, because I pointed out how food has different colors, so each of these pigments could absorb and reflect different wavelengths of light, and they're helping pass the energy to chlorophyll A, where chlorophyll A will donate the electrons to the electron transport chain, and then you have water being split to replace those electrons. Okay, so now let's look at 
um, this again, the light reaction. So here's photosystem two, and in photosystem two, you have your chlorophyll A as a main pigment. You also have accessory pigments that can absorb and reflect different colors of light. Um, you have PS1, photosystem one. Um, where the light comes into chlorophyll uh, PS2, the light is transferred and passed to chlorophyll A. This is where you're going to have the electrons are going to break off of chlorophyll A, shoot up, and then they can enter into the electron transport chain. They're going to travel down the electron transport chain. But first I should point out, chlorophyll B the, in photosystem 1, the light is hitting that as well, and those electrons are also breaking off. So these electrons also shoot up. To replace chlorophyll B's electrons, we're going to have these one all. Oh. To replace chlorophyll A's electrons, we're going to split water, photolysis, so those electrons will go back into chlorophyll A, so light reaction can happen again. And then we have these electrons are going to travel down, ah, oh. <laughs> travel down the electron transport chain. And as they travel down, they pump hydrogen into the thylakoid space. So now the electrons that were lost from chlorophyll B are being replaced from these electrons from chlorophyll A. And now the final electron acceptor is NAD+. We receive these electrons becoming reduced. And now that will go over to the Calvin cycle, or the dark reaction. Now over time, you're going to get an accumulation of protons, both from the splitting of water, but also from them being pumped in. Here we have our proton gradient. This is also where ATP synthase comes into play. So we make ATP because of chemiosmosis um, and because light is really what's responsible for creating the proton gradient in the silicoid space, we call this type of phosphorylation photophosphorylation. And really, at the end of this, this is the light reaction. Okay. Oh, I guess I can summarize. So here's the light reaction. Oops. So sunlight comes in. We also require water. Water is going to end up being split during the light reaction. Um, and that's where the oxygen comes from. The electrons from water will end up uh, in NADPH. The hydrogen uh, will ultimately, I guess, end up on NADPH. Both NADPH and ATP are going to be used in the Calvin cycle that we don't see here yet. Um, so our light reaction produces ATP and NADPH, and oxygen comes off as a waste product. So when we look back at this slide about the light reaction and the dark reactions, we see that in the light reaction we require sunlight and water, um, and as we do the light reaction we're going to produce oxygen from photolysis or splitting water. We also make ATP and NADPH. These are the first products of converting sunlight or solar energy into chemical energy. Now we have an energy in the form of an electron carrier as well as an ATP. These, <laughs> these right here are going to be invested in the Calvin cycle because in the Calvin cycle we require carbon dioxide and it's going to use the energy from ATP and NADPH through a series of endergonic reactions and it's going to build, so anabolic, and we're going to invest that energy, and the, not we, but the plant, and the plant's going to build glucose. So the Calvin cycle is all about taking the chemical energy from the light reaction and storing it long term in the bonds of a glucose molecule.